Hi friend, welcome to day two of Mark chapter nine. Uh, if you're short on faith today, this is a great place to be. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your compassion to us. Lord, we are here because we want our faith to grow. We uh, Help us, God. Help us to even have a mustard seed of faith today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and read. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, Oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose and when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Okay, well, friends, this is one of my favorite passages of scripture. I have always loved this story. Well, especially since we, since, boy, I can't talk, since the day I became a mom, right? There is something about this. I think we can all, if we're parents, we can relate to the father and his desperate need for the healing of a son, right? There is nothing this father can do to help his son. And we can only imagine all of the things that he has tried. And here we are at this point where he has sought to bring his son to Jesus and find some of his disciples. So let's begin from the beginning. We have the who. We have Jesus, Peter, James, and John. They are coming back from this uh, intense time on the high mountain, and they come to the other disciples. And we also see that there is a crowd around them, and there are scribes within the in the crowd and there's an argument going on there's some debate happening and so Jesus wants to know what what is what is going on well no I guess I asked the question what what is going on so what happens is we see the crowd number one they see Jesus they become excited that's what it means to be greatly amazed they become excited here he is and three, so they run to him. And number four, they greet him. And then Jesus wants to know what is being debated. What's going on here? So right away, just to summarize, right away, this father speaks up from the crowd. And he, he says, look, I've brought my demon-possessed son to your disciples. They were not able to cast out the unclean spirit. And so I did ask this question, why? Why weren't they able to cast out this spirit? 
And it, to me, it seems to be a faith issue. I wish you were sitting right here so we could have a discussion about it. But if we look at Jesus's response in verse 19, he says, Oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? And then he charges them to bring him to me, bring this boy to me. All right. Oh, faithless generation. Faithless means unbelieving. <laughs> All right. And the one of the cross references is John 20 verse 27, where Jesus says to Thomas, one of his disciples, put your finger here and see my hands and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve but believe. So I'm thinking this has to do with believing and, and whether or not the disciples themselves are believing. And we kind of see that even in Jesus's response to their question. They asked the question in verse 28, why could we not cast it out? And Jesus says, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. So there, there is a piece with prayer that we need to pray with belief, right? We need to pray being at one with Jesus and the Father. All right. So, and I, I think this story highlights this beautifully. So the Father explains the situation uh, the son is brought to Jesus and immediately we just see how dire the situation. This poor boy is overcome by the unclean spirit. And Mark gives a lot of detail that surely came from Peter, right? Who is an eyewitness to this. We have a lot of detail on what happened. So uh, the Jesus asked the father an interesting question. How long has this been happening to him? And, you know, my first thought is Jesus is just seeking to better understand, right? Uh, but Jesus is the son of God. Like Jesus sees, he knows, he cares. And so after I pondered that for a bit, I'm thinking, you know what? He wants to help the father understand and kind of think back and remember just how long this has been going on. He wants the father, don't you think? He wants the father to recognize and remember his inability to do anything to help his son, all right? And why, wants his father to remember why he has come to Jesus. And so the father, the father replies, uh, what verse is that? Verse 22, or no, verse 21. That's the end of verse 21. From childhood, and it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. And then the father looks at Jesus and he says, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So I feel like I wrote that down as the father's first prayer, right? I mean, he's talking to Jesus. That's what prayer is. He's talking to Jesus and he says, if, if you can do anything, please, Jesus, have compassion on us, have mercy, have grace, have favor and help us, assist us. And, you know, I think a lot of us, I don't know about you, but I feel like I have prayed in this way. I have prayed with unbelief. Lord, if you will, if you can do anything for us, please, Lord, please help us. And Jesus, I love this. Jesus says to the Father, and we can only imagine like Jesus looking right in his eyes, looking directly into his soul, says to him, if you can, like he's surprised by the unbelief, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. So yeah, here's a gentle rebuke, but really what it is, is encouragement. What is Jesus wanting to do? Jesus is asking the pointed question. He, he, he is, yeah, he is speaking to the Father's soul. But here is grace. Here's Jesus' mercy, his compassion. He wants the Father to understand. He wants to help increase 
the father's faith. And so the father prays a second prayer. He just cries out. And I love this. I feel like here is just a very honest prayer. I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe. Help my unbelief. And that help, it does mean, please, assist me. Be of service. And the cross-reference is Luke 17, 5. Uh, the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Friends, that's a beautiful prayer. That's a takeaway for today. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. I believe. Help my unbelief. <laughs> I love that prayer. Friends, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a prayer that applies for us today, right? I think we see a scenario that we can follow. Number one, believe, right? Believe. Um, we see that being a theme here. Number two, bring our loved ones to Jesus. Bring our family to Jesus and ask for help to believe. I just wrote down, be open and honest with Jesus and ask for help to believe. Friends, he wants to give us a mustard seed of faith. He does. It's his heart. We see his grace. We see his mercy. We see his compassion towards the Father. Uh, and he helps his Father increase in faith. And then we see him heal. We see him take the sun up lift him up. And I think that's a beautiful picture of what Jesus does when he heals someone. He takes them by the hand. He lifts them up and helps them up onto their feet. Oh, friends, what a beautiful passage. Lord, help us. Help us in our unbelief. Help us to believe. Increase our faith today. Let's ponder that for the day, friends.